What is up everybody? So I just finished two jobs in a row now that have needed pipe threads. And I don't know what it is. I haven't touched pipe threads in years and all of a sudden two jobs in a row need them. But anyway, um, first job wasn't really a big deal because it was a through hole so I just tapped them by hand. Second job, I took it, didn't really realize what I was getting into, but the bottom of the hole next down to where it was almost a blind hole, it just had this little bit poking through. It was a like quarter inch pipe thread and it had a quarter inch diameter hole at the bottom to let whatever, you know, pass through. Um, so I ended up struggling with that and I kind of looked into thread milling, but with the timeline of the job and everything, I wasn't confident that I could get my thread mills in time, get you know, everything done in time correctly and shipped out. Um, so I reached out for some assistance and what I was told was, you know, take a couple, like buy like two taps and, uh, you know, start tapping the hole. And then once the first tap bottoms out, take it and grind it down a little bit and then go a little bit deeper, grind it down a little more, go a little bit deeper until you've got, you know, as deep as you need to go and whatever fitting or whatever gauge you've got works. So that actually worked. I was actually kind of humbled by that because I've been sitting there racking my brain about it for a few days and I hadn't come up with anything good. And then all of a sudden, you know, something so simple as, you know, oh yeah, just grind a little bit of that tap down and that'll work. So I got the job out and everything. I was good or I was happy about that. But overall, I want to learn how to thread mill. So I had already ordered a couple thread mills for the job and I figured I might as well give it a try. So here we go. All right, so this is what it looks like in Fusion. Just a simple, you know, cube, I guess, if you will. Dimensions are the rough dimensions of my rough stock, 1.4 by 1.63, something like that. And I think I did 3 8 deep. Yeah, 3 8 thick. From there, I'm just gonna go ahead and, um, this is the center drill. And so yeah, just, just kiss it there. Then we're going to grab a number seven drill bit. That's what this is. Um, peck at it a little bit. Uh, chamfer the top. And then go ahead and do the thread mill. So that's what that looks like. I'm doing four passes just because I want to really take it easy. Um, really first time ever doing it. I want to make sure, you know, go as easy as I can in it. If you're wondering what my thread mill settings are, we can go in here real quick. And take a look. Um, so I drew up this thread mill, so I grabbed that out of my tool table. Uh, just, I just grabbed a guess. I want 2,500 RPM, um, thousandth um, inch per tooth. Uh, I heard somewhere that you should half your feed rates on your lead ins and lead outs. Um, so I just ran those at half of that. Uh, geometry, you just grab the um, diameter. And it does say somewhere that it should be a minor diameter. I don't remember where I saw that. Maybe it's right here. For ID thread mill. Select any ID or OD faces. Note for ID thread milling, um, cylinder should be modeled to the minor diameter. So yeah, that's where I saw that. So those are modeled at like 0 0.201 right now. Uh, heights, I told it to go a little bit below it. So 10 thou below it so that it completes the threads. Passes, so pitch offset, that's uh, 1 divided by 20 is 0 0.05. Pitch diameter offset is 0 0.250 minus 0 0.201. Uh, and I'll talk about that a little bit later on. I had that a little higher, um, so you'll see what happens there. Multiple passes, this is where I got my four passes with a 10 thou step over. Um, And this one was important, lead to center. So if you don't have this, it'll actually sometimes not drop down the very center of the hole. So you can see kind of right in here all the different times it drops down. It's, it's different. If you click that, that all goes away. It goes down the center of the hole every time. So just be safe, I'd leave that one checked. And that is about it for the CAD and CAM. So it's gonna be a simple setup. I've just got a little piece of scrap material here. Uh, I'm just gonna drill two holes, um, the minor diameter, so like 0 0.201 for a quarter 20. And then I'm gonna go ahead and try and tap the first, um, see how it fits and everything. And then um, go from there. You know, I might tap the second one, we'll see. If the first one's perfect, I might call it a night.
All right, so easy, low stress part is done. Just went ahead and drilled and chamfered the holes. So they're ready to go, I got two of them. My plan is to go ahead and do the first one. And after that, if all goes well, I'll go ahead and do the second one. The first one, I'm not gonna be recording because I don't wanna be trying to you know, be concerned about the camera while I'm doing this. Um, so after the first one's good to go, I'll come back in, do the second one, holding the camera, um, still running flood coolant, and I still won't have an awesome aluminum GoPro case. So I'll get what I can. Hopefully you can see it on there. Uh, so here we go, pucker factor time. All right, so no broken tools. Check it out, it's right here. There it is, still there. We've got a hole. And I'm not even gonna try and act surprised because I couldn't wait to get the camera on to test it. So it does fit, there we go. Um, it fits, but as you can see, it's pretty darn loose. So, that's my biggest complaint at the moment, is just how loose that is. Um, it does get tight at the bottom, but I think that's just because there's a burr down there. So, yeah, like right when you kind of loosen it up there, you got quite a bit of wiggle. So I went back into Fusion, and I changed my... Um, pitch diameter offset. So it was at like 0.58. And I think that's based on some of the stuff John Saunders has said about um, how if you do just strictly the difference between the major and minor diameters, you'll get a really tight fit. And so he relaxes that and he's got a calculator and stuff. So I'm probably using it a little bit incorrectly or something because mine's a little bit too loose. So what I did for this hole is I just went back to the straight definition. So um, minor is 0.201, major is obviously 0.250, difference is 0.049. I'm going to go ahead and try and cut that one and uh, see how it goes. Another thing, I didn't have my tool entered in my table correctly, and so it was running at one inch per minute instead of 10 inches a minute. So that will probably change things. So I'm actually a little bit nervous to record this one. I kind of want to have my finger on the on the kill button if I need to. Um, but yeah, I had it entered in as a single flute cutter and it was all screwed up. So now it should be good to go. All right, I got scared and I didn't grab the camera. I was just nervous since I was literally going 10 times faster than the first one. So I got a hole. Or I guess I had a hole before. I got threads. So let's go ahead and test it. This time I didn't test it without you guys. So let's see if it goes in. Ooh, that's like, it is snug, but honestly on aluminum, where I know I'm gonna wear it out with steel bolts and stuff, that's like really nice. Like, I like that. So that was just with the standard, you know, major minus minor diameters to give you your pitch diameter offset in Fusion, and that works pretty darn good. I'm happy with that. I'm just gonna do that, I think. See if I can zoom in for you guys. There you go. Threaded holes, yay. All right, there they are. Boom. So I am super excited. I am so tired of tapping threads by hand. I'm not typically the type to go out and you know, learn new things when there's not a need for it. And so this one was really tough. It's like one of those things I'm like, I know I need to do it because I've sat and I've done, you know, fixture plates like this and, and tapped all those holes by hand. You know, there's another one behind it, which a lot simpler, but those are all tapped holes that I tapped by hand. You know, at some point it just gets to be a pain. It's like, if that's something that I can do when, without even taking it off the mill and just go back in the house and watch TV, then that's awesome. So I guess overcoming the laziness up front allows you to be lazy a lot longer, a lot later. So you're gonna have to keep that in mind. But maybe that'll be my new motto. So yeah, that's about all I got. I'm pretty happy. Um, you know, this is just one step. It wouldn't have covered me for the last job I had where it was literally a tapered hole with tapered threads that I would have had to figure out. 
Um, that, that'll probably be the next thing I work on with it. I'll probably never see another pipe thread job again if I'm actually that good, but you know, that's just Murphy's Law. So, you know, one way or another, I probably should learn it. So I think that is about it for this week. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.